you have two choices. You can reinforce these thoughts. You can feed into these thoughts. You can continue playing along and fantasizing with these thoughts, right? And what that's going to do over time is cause you to perform actions based on these thoughts because thoughts are seeds. You're feeding them to your subconscious mind. The more that you water these seeds, it's going to develop an action in the physical realm. That's one choice. The other choice is to observe this behavior. When you begin to have these thoughts, analyze the body. What did you do or what stimulated your body to trigger these thoughts? This is what happens during insight meditation. This is what happens during Vipassana. When you sit still, you don't focus on trying to astral project or trying to stop your thoughts or do this or that. You simply focus on the body and you focus on the reactions of the body. You focus on how your skin feels, how the air passing across your skin, how the breathing is through your nose. You scan the body and what you begin to see is that thoughts are triggered by body input, by the impulses received by the sensory organs. They trigger thoughts. Thoughts don't just come out of nowhere. They're received. When the body receives this vibration of whatever it is through all the sensory inputs, it triggers memories and those memories cause you to give definition. And this starts this cycle of thinking. It's automatic. So if you take yourself out of the moment, right? When, when these thoughts begin to pop up in your head, take yourself out of that thinking. It's not you thinking these thoughts. You understand that it's your body receiving signals that is triggering these thoughts. It's a process. It's a computation. It's a computer process. When you take yourself out of the moment and you begin to realize this, you can separate the object from the subject. You can separate the animal from that which is observing the animal. And this starts the process of separating body from mind to spirit. Because as humans, as most of you are, as all of us have started out, our mind is focused outward. It's focused outward on the sensory perceptions. We calculate reality based on our senses. But as you learn meditation and spiritual practice, the mind begins to go inward and it slowly starts to learn how to separate from body senses to thought. And then as you work further, you separate body and thought from spirit. And you realize that it is spirit that is experiencing this 3D reality through body and mind. But before you get there, you have to gain experience in this body-mind loop. You've got to see it in action. It's not enough for me to tell you about it, and it's not enough for you to read about it. You literally have to sit down and meditate and observe your body, right? Just sit still, and you're going to get this little pain in your leg or a cramp. Put your attention there and observe it. Observe how that little pain in your leg is discomfort, and it's causing aversion. It's causing you to run away from it. It's forcing you to make a decision to move, right? It's happening automatically. That's not you saying, okay, I want to move now. You're, it's, you're wanting to move for a reason. And that reason is you're running away from pain. Every decision that human beings make is running towards pleasure or running away from pain. Every single one. And when you get into meditation and you experience this reality for yourself, you can start to put the pieces in order. In order to have spiritual success and mental strength, you have to be able to put reality in order to understand these things properly or else they just run you on autopilot. So when you're sitting in meditation and you're realizing that this pain has come, when you don't give into it, if, when you just observe it, when you separate yourself from the experiencer into the observer, you notice that eventually that pain goes away and that teaches you a valuable lesson that every piece of stimulation comes and goes. Every single piece of stimulation comes and goes. It rises and falls. It's called impermanence. Impermanence is key in awareness, insight, meditation. The higher consciousness, you're living in it. This is what it is. It's this world we live in, this universe. It's all be cre being created by what? The thought process that we're giving off. But again, 
It's a what? Illusion. But when you try to fight against the illusion, the illusion will become real. real. But when you understand it's an illusion and you submit to the lesson of the illusion, that's when the illusion will dissolve. And let me tell you something about breatharianism. You can't force your way into it. It is given to you by the higher powers. You understand? Your hunger will be taken. One day you won't feel like it, but that taken away is going to come from the higher subtle forces because it knows the nature of your heart. It really knows you submitted. So you can talk to everybody else. That don't mean nothing. You can act hard, tough. You understand? I don't care how many yoga moves or techniques you do. You got to understand that it's a what? Intent of the heart. And the heart is the higher mind. And when that fully submits to the higher forces, that's when the levels and degrees will take place to move you forward into your true potential. So what this does with your thought process is when you receive this input, when you learn not to give into it, not to react to it, not to attach to these thoughts, not to identify with these thoughts, when you just observe them, you're taking yourself out of identifying with these thoughts and you'll find that they go away. When you stop feeding them, they go away. It might take a little bit of time because you've got so many years of being used to feeding these thoughts, but once you practice detaching from identifying with these thoughts because they don't define you, they're simply your body receiving input and you putting definition on that input. That's all it is. It's a mechanical process. So now we're learning to separate from the mechanical process, separate from the machine. You're the ghost in the machine. Now let's go back into limitations. There's nothing wrong with limitations. Limitations were designed, you understand, for us to enjoy this realm. So you're always gonna meet limitations. That's not the problem. It's how you go through your limitations. And you always go through your limitations through submission. Now keep in mind that your thoughts is a vehicle. Your thoughts is not you. So when you come on your breath theory uh, process, you must understand this. So that's why there's meditations to teach you how to just observe your thoughts. It's not about even thinking positive. They're not you. They're just a vehicle that you're using in this realm. Now, as you start observing the thoughts, there is a level of consciousness that exists that's above our regular thought process because your body matrix is hooked up to a thought process that's hooked up with the whole universe. That's why you're the macrocosm of the macrocosm. But your regular thought process that you've been educated with cannot comprehend this and it will not because it's trapped into the five senses. It only has a limited way of understanding so that's why in spirituality they say you must what manifest or create a sixth sense a six of a sense of feeling that's why the buddha said they asked him the question what is going to become beyond the state of suffering he said there's no words from it you will find out on your own because as soon as you try to define it you just set up expectation and put yourself back in duality of the thought process. That's why the breath in process is a feeling state. But the only way to experience this feeling state, first you must begin to just observe your thoughts and understand they are a vehicle and they are not you. Now in the scriptures, there's a story where Jacob wrestled with the angel at night. And when he wrestled and became victorious, he saw the face of God. Now, what does that mean? He was wrestling with the angel of the Lord, which meant his thoughts. Your thoughts are very powerful, but keep in mind, they are not you. They are just a vehicle. It's an entity within itself. So there's times in this circumstance of Maya or the illusion that we live in, the negativity of circumstances of thought will come against you or your thought process will seem like to be your enemy. But don't let it take you over and prevail. There's going to be those times you're going to have to stand up for yourself and go within to what? 
battle against the angel of the Lord, which is your own thoughts, which is very powerful. But to wrestle with it ain't to take it on because you can't defeat your thoughts like that. You must observe it because when you observe it, you put it into its place because it's like a cloud going through the sky. A cloud is going through the sky, but when you observe it, there's a clear sky in the background. Pretty soon that cloud is going to go through the sky and then the clearness of the sky will be there again. You understand? So he wrestled with his thoughts at night. The angel of the Lord, the powerful thoughts, he observed them. And when he observed them and when they left, he was able to see the face of God, which is you, your true self your higher nature that goes beyond your thought process. And that is the nourishment. That is the sustaining factor that gives you your power to bring you back into your self-consciousness. But first you have to know how the machine works. And this is exactly how it works. The body runs from pain and runs toward pleasure. And it generates thoughts based on those two impulses. It's an endless cycle. It's not going to change. What you have to do is learn how to not identify with that process and it takes practice and that practice is done to insight meditation. In the realm of meditation you begin to realize with experience how this plays out. Once you master that process you begin to master yourself. At that point the cycles of humanity begins to weaken its grasp upon you begins to loosen its grasp upon you. It doesn't affect you as much because you don't identify with humanity as much. And as you practice this process, you get better, you get stronger. You gain more insight on the true nature of reality. You reach higher and higher in spiritual levels. You let go of ego things naturally because you're no longer identifying with the body. See, one crucial thing I learned when I went through my experience with psychedelics and mushrooms is that reality is very intricately based on your thoughts. Where your head is at, where your mind is at determines so much. And we don't even realize that. You can be the most depressed and sad person in the world and have all the opportunity in front of you, but you're not going to see it because your mind is stuck in the past, in pain, right? It all depends on your mind. And when you're in that very sensitive space of a psychedelic experience, your thought process and your perspective and your attitude is the steering wheel and it gets very sensitive. It's like playing a first person shooter and you raise the sensitivity all the way up to 10. A few bad thoughts can quickly send you down a bad trip. But see, if you don't understand that you have control over giving in to these thoughts or not giving in to these thoughts, you're gonna just be pushed to and fro by your environment, by the body impulses. When the body begins to shake, you're going to remember the last time that you began to shake and you're gonna think, oh no, I'm in danger, I'm in fear, I'm paranoid. That's gonna send you down a spiral of somewhere else. That's what the sensitivity up to nine. When you take the sensitivity down to one in your everyday life, the process happens a little bit slower, a little more gradually, but it still happens that way. Your definitions determine what thoughts you have and the thoughts you have determines what actions you take. So step out of that process, step out of identifying with the thoughts and observe them as they happen and change them in the moment. Get left of bang. Fix your thoughts before they fix you. And you're not gonna do that getting caught up in race, getting caught up in politics and celebrity death and whatever outbreak and whatever natural disaster if you notice, these cycles of humanity continue to repeat. At the same time, there's always a political scandal, there's always a celebrity death, there's always a natural disaster, there's always some type of health concern. These four cycles continue to happen, and they continue to keep you in fear. They keep you reacting. That's all this is.